The AI world just had one of those weeks where everything feels like it's accelerating at once. Meta dropped a vision breakthrough that could make AI robots see and understand the world at an entirely new level. Google released a model so tiny and efficient that it can run advanced AI right on your phone without draining your battery. ByteDance just gave AI the skills to hunt down bugs in massive code bases like a heat-seeking missile. And Microsoft quietly built something that could become the new standard for how we design prompts for AI, a kind of HTML for artificial intelligence. So let's talk about it. All right, let's start with Meta's Dino V3 because the scale of this release is staggering and the potential impact is massive. Dino V3 is a self-supervised computer vision model, which means it trained itself without any human labeled data. That's a big deal because labeling images is one of the slowest and most expensive steps in AI development. Instead of relying on humans to tell it this is a tree or this is a car, Dino V3 learned by scanning 1.7 billion images finding patterns and teaching itself what objects look like. Now here's why that's huge. Robots and AI systems that depend on labeled data are limited by how much labeled data exists. With self-supervised learning, the AI can learn from the endless stream of unlabeled images already out there from street cameras, drones, satellites, even your own phone camera, without waiting for humans to tag every object. That means it can adapt far faster to new environments, new industries, and new challenges because it's not bottlenecked by human labor. The architecture here is a frozen universal backbone with 7 billion parameters. Frozen means it doesn't need retraining for each new task. You just add lightweight adapters for whatever job you need, whether that's spotting cracks in a bridge, counting crops in a field, monitoring wildlife populations from aerial footage, or guiding a robot's hands to pick up a fragile object without breaking it. And this isn't just theory, it's already outperforming models designed for specific domains. The beauty of this frozen backbone is that it keeps the computational cost low while still delivering state-of-the-art accuracy. Meta's releasing the huge VITG backbone plus smaller distilled versions, VITB, VITL, and ConNext variants so the same tech can run on everything from big research servers to small edge devices inside a robot's head. The scaling flexibility means you could see Dino V3 running on autonomous delivery robots, drones, security systems, and even in consumer devices in the near future. NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab is already using it to help Mars rovers see better without adding heavy compute loads and the World Resources Institute used it to cut tree canopy height error in Kenya from 4.1 meters to 1.2. That's a 70% improvement in measurement accuracy. And in fields like environmental monitoring, that kind of precision can completely change how decisions are made. The jump from the previous Dino V2 is huge. Training data has gone from 142 million images to 1.7 billion. Parameters have gone from 1.1 billion to 7 billion, and dense prediction performance now outperforms even domain specialists. That combination of massive scale and zero fine tuning requirements makes it incredibly versatile. Now imagine a humanoid robot equipped with this. Instead of just seeing blurry shapes and relying on pre programmed object lists, it could walk into a new environment and instantly break down what it's seeing, identifying objects, reading signs, mapping its surroundings, even if it's never been trained for that specific place or those specific objects. It could walk into a factory it's never visited before and immediately understand the layout, spot potential hazards, and figure out where each component is. That's the level of adaptability Dino V3 unlocks and it's the kind of capability that could push robots much closer to being truly general purpose helpers in the real world. But real quick, if you've been following all this AI news and thinking, okay, this is cool, but what can I actually do with it? You're definitely not alone. That's why we created the AI Income Blueprint. It shows you seven ways regular people are using AI to build extra income streams on the side. No tech skills needed, and you can automate everything pretty easily. The guide contains simple, proven methods using tools I often talk about on this channel. Download it free by clicking the link in the description. So Google's news this week feels like the other side of the AI coin. While Meta went massive, Google went ultra-compact, 
with the Gemma 3 270 million. This is a 270 million parameter model built for hyper efficient task specific fine tuning. The 3 in its name is because it's part of the third generation Gemma family. And the design philosophy is simple. Make the right sized model for focused jobs and make it run anywhere. And the core here is a 256,000 token vocabulary with roughly 170 million parameters just for embeddings. That's how it can handle rare, specialized words in industries like medicine, law, or engineering without stumbling. And it's shockingly efficient. In its INT4 quantized version, it can handle 25 full conversations on a Pixel 9 Pro while using less than 1% of the battery. That means you could have an AI assistant running on your phone all day without it even showing up on your battery graph because it can run entirely on device. Nothing ever has to leave your phone. It's great for privacy, no sending sensitive data to the cloud. And thanks to quantization aware training, it can operate at four bit precision with almost no quality loss, letting it run on devices with tiny memory footprints. It ships both pre-trained and instruction tuned so it can follow structured prompts right away and fine tuning it for a specific task might only take 10 or 20 examples. That's fast enough for a developer to build a custom AI for a business in an afternoon. Companies have already used larger Gemma models to beat big proprietary systems in multilingual content moderation. With the 270 million, developers can keep multiple specialized models on one device. Maybe one for compliance checking, another for customer service, another for industry specific analysis, and switch between them instantly without heavy infrastructure. Then there's ByteDance with ToolTrain, which solves a completely different problem, making AI actually good at navigating giant code bases. If you've ever dealt with a huge software project, you know the nightmare of trying to find exactly where a bug lives. That's what's called issue localization. It's not just searching for a keyword, you often have to follow a chain of clues across multiple files and functions, and each step depends on understanding what came before. Current large language models can help, but they tend to either wander aimlessly or make the wrong tool calls. ToolTrain changes this by combining supervised fine tuning with reinforcement learning, training models to call the right tools in the right order. They've built a lightweight agent called Repo Searcher that can, for example, locate a function definition by name, and then decide strategically what to do next instead of chasing irrelevant leads. They trained it in two stages, rejection sampled SFT to get the basics right, then tool integrated RL to sharpen multi-hop reasoning. For testing, they used SWE Bench verified real GitHub issues with fixes verified by professional developers. The results speak for themselves. On the Quen 32 billion model, Repo Searcher with ToolTrain hit a function level recall at 5 of 68.55, beating Claude 3.7 Sonnet's 66.38. Even the 7 billion parameter version topped other frameworks that were using 32 billion parameter models. The 7 billion model pulled a recall at 5 of 62.38 and a resolution rate of 14% while the 32 billion model reached 31.60 on resolution rate. That's not just faster, it's more accurate, and it makes smaller models far more capable in high stakes debugging. Finally, Microsoft's move this week might sound less flashy, but for developers working with LLMs, it's going to be a game changer. P-O-M-L, or Prompt Orchestration Markup Language. Think of it as a structured language for building AI prompts, like HTML, but for LLM instructions. Right now, prompts are often just long strings of text, crammed with role definitions, instructions, and examples. They get messy fast, especially when you add dynamic elements or data references. POML organizes all of that with semantic tags like role, task, example, making prompts readable, reusable, and far easier to maintain. It supports embedding all kinds of data directly in the prompt, documents, tables, images, so you can build prompts that reference multiple resources without breaking the structure. And just like CSS separates styling from HTML content, POML lets you separate output formatting from the actual prompt logic. That means you can change how an AI's response looks without touching the instructions that drive its behavior. There's also a built-in templating engine with variables, loops, and conditionals so you can generate dynamic prompts at scale. And 
Microsoft didn't stop there. They've released a VS Code extension for syntax highlighting, auto completion, hover documentation, live previews, plus SDKs for Node.js and Python so it fits right into existing workflows. One example they gave, a teaching prompt for photosynthesis with an embedded image, a defined role as patient teacher for a 10-year-old, a clear task, and an output constraint to keep the explanation under 100 words, all of it neatly wrapped in markup. The way it's structured follows a view layer philosophy, separating presentation from business logic, which means developers can refactor, test variations, and keep prompts consistent across multiple agents without creating a mess of unmanageable text files. It's open source under the MIT license, already on GitHub and set up for quick installation with NPM or PIP. Given how fast AI workflows are evolving, this could become the backbone of prompt engineering in production systems. Look, most people still think AI is some distant future, but regular folks are already using it to build income streams quietly, behind the scenes. If you want to see how they're doing it without tech skills or quitting their job, download the AI Income Blueprint. It's totally free, the link's in the description, but it won't stay free forever. So what do you think? Which of these four breakthroughs is going to make the biggest difference in the next couple of years? Let me know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.